We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our light and our salvation. Amen. Let us prepare for Christ's coming by turning from our sin and seeking God's tender mercy and compassion. Our words and deeds have not proclaimed your reign of justice and truth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have failed to watch and pray for the signs of your coming among us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Forgive our sin and come quickly to save us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In the advent of Christ, the dawn from on high breaks upon you and with light and healing. Through Jesus Christ, God looks with favor on you and gives you forgiveness of all your sin. Amen. We praise you, O oh God, for this evergreen crown that marks the days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light this candle, the first candle of this wreath, rouse us from sleep that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, nor ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God but you, who work for those who wait for you. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our inquiries, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and delivered us into the land of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are as a father to us. We are the clay and you are our potter. And we all are the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
a reading from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him, you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Word of God, word of Christ. Thanks be to our God. Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens shall be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds and from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you will know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near. And the very, at the very gates, Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Well, it's finally here. No, I'm not talking about how it's finally the appropriate time to start listening to Christmas music. And I'm not also talking about that package that you've been waiting to arrive in the mail. What's finally here is Advent. And here at Holy Trinity, we've been donning the blue vestments for about three weeks now. But today officially marks the beginning of the liturgical season of Advent, complete with our wreath and everything else, our music, our hymns. But I have to admit, something feels a bit different this year. It's almost like this first week of Advent doesn't feel as climactic. And I've wondered about that. And as I wondered, I realized that maybe this first week of Advent feels less climactic because we have been in Advent, a season of waiting for nine months now. I mean, just think about it. This pandemic has had us waiting and longing for in-person activities and an effective vaccine since March. Not to mention the election season that had us waiting all on pins and needles. And even now, President Trump is still mounting challenges, hoping that the election results will be overturned in his favor. Still waiting. So even though this marks the beginning of Advent, the question in our minds right now is not necessarily how should we wait, but when will all of this waiting end? So preaching this first week of Advent is tricky this year. And I usually look forward to preaching Advent because it always feels like this patient, countercultural liturgical season in an instant gratification world. But instant gratification is not really our experience right now. So instead of doubling down and just focusing on the waiting or on the staying awake, even when many of us are losing sleep, or even on the increasing darkness of our days, maybe we can just take some time right now and simply dream about what it is we're even waiting for. The vision that our text today paint is one that is a little bit more apocalyptic than we might expect. Mark's gospel, Jesus says this, but in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. And then in our first reading from Isaiah, the prophet writes this, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fires kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, and to make your name known among your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. I don't know, these visions are filled with the frightening power of God almost. But to a community that has been waiting, quietly facing their own private Armageddons many times over, I think this apocalyptic dream of the stars falling from heaven doesn't necessarily sound like the sky is falling, but a promise that God will tear open the heavens and come down to save us. That there is nothing God will not do to be with us. Nothing can separate us from God. And in the true meaning of the word apocalypse, which means revelation, this pandemic has revealed so much to us in this time of waiting. Racism and police brutality are being revealed in horrific ways. People are living close to the economic edge, and this pandemic has pushed them into freefall, even as the stock market is reaching record highs. It's revealing to us that our economy is not the stock market. Not to mention all the political divisions that have been revealed in our country during this election season. 
This is laid bare and revealed the real distance that exists between people's different definitions of truth. And throughout all these apocalyptic revelations, our scripture texts reveal to us a greater truth, one that promises that we can trust there is a relentless God that will stop at nothing and let no barrier get in their way to be with us. This is the promise that we wait with hope for. And while we wait, it is Paul today in 1 Corinthians who reminds us that we have been given everything that we need to endure this season of waiting. Paul insists that we lack no spiritual gift. He says with thanksgiving, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Jesus Christ. From in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and in knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. We do not lack because we are still being made. We are still being formed. We are held in the palm of God's hands. As our text from Isaiah attests, we are the clay, you are the potter, we are the work of your hand. And as we wait, there are signs of hope all around us. Moments of connection, moments of peace, moments of love, moments of justice, moments of gratitude. Cherish those moments as they remind us of God's presence among us supporting us, holding us, even in our time of waiting. And until the last, God's dream will be fulfilled, and a new heaven and earth and all creation will be resurrected. I can't tell you when the day or the hour that this will take place, but we can trust the promise that God will be present with us and strengthen us till the end. Until that time when, in the words of Reverend Lenny Duncan, we can remain to be an incarnational community and a placeholder for the kingdom to come. So as we begin this Advent, even though it feels like a never-ending Advent, we can look with hope to the promise of God, who stops at nothing, not even death, to come and save us. God's grace has made us ready to receive that moment. In the meantime, God will sustain us. God will strengthen us. And God, our potter's hands, will support us in our waiting. Amen.
when sirens call for war. They overshout the voice of reason and scream till we ignore all we held dear before. Yet I believe the unbelieving that life can spring. transfixed by faith. So even as the sun is turning to journey to the north, a living flame in secret burning can kindle on the earth and bring God's love to birth. O oh, child of ecstasy, sorrows, O oh, Prince of Peace and Pain, brighten today's world by tomorrow's, renew our lives again, Lord Jesus, come and reign. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At the first of the church year, let us pray that God comes quickly to this weary world. Immortal, invisible God, only wise, we pray for the church, both our congregation and assemblies around the globe. Shepherd for another year the grace of our bishops, pastors, deacons, musicians, and all who minister in the church. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus. God of the sparrow, God of the whale, protect the animals, whether wild or farmed or tame. Restore devastated habitats and polluted waters. Let us pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Mighty fortress, protect all people who are poor or oppressed. Grant that the leaders of the nations respond with justice and relief to those who suffer. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Mother in God, visit with your power any who are homeless or unemployed and all who are hungry. Protect children from all manners of abuse. Comfort those who live with chronic pain, anxieties, and addictions. Save all peoples from the coronavirus. We pray especially for those we name in the chat feature or by temporarily unmuting. Tom Loftus and his family and friends. For Steve, for Sharon, for all members of the South Loop Community Table. For Sarah. Stir up your strength and come to help us. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Beautiful Savior, abide with us during December. Give your beauty to our holiday preparations in this challenging season and your grace to the many who have little to celebrate this year. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord of all hopefulness, we give thanks for all the faithful, for Andrew, the first disciple to follow Jesus, John of Damascus, 
Francis Xavier for those who died while waiting for justice and peace. At the end, bring us with them into your shining presence. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Eternal Father, strong to save, sustain us in your promise as we watch and wait for the coming of Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, since we began today's worship service with the confession and forgiveness, we didn't get a welcome. So I want to officially welcome you all here to worship tonight here at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. As we normally do, we invite folks into gallery view just to see the, the fullness of the gathered body of Christ here tonight in this virtual realm. So why don't we do that? Jump into gallery view and give each other a wave as we begin these announcements here tonight. And as we give each other a wave and a welcome, we want you to know that you are welcome here, no matter who you are or where you're from, no matter the color of your skin or who you love or marry, no matter your gender identity, your age, your ability, your documentation status, who you vote for, or even how you feel about organized church or religion, or even church online, especially right now. But well, we welcome you here, and we are so glad you are here. If you'd like, after worship, we have a short reception hour where we can greet one another and have some fellowship time. So if you're interested, please stick around after worship for that moment on Zoom when we get to see one another and just share what's going on in each other's lives, especially following this Thanksgiving holiday. I hope all of your Thanksgivings were great. But I do want to say thank you in the spirit of Thanksgiving for all of the generosity recently. Last week was the end of our generosity appeal, All Things New, and we received over almost 130 intentions uh, online last week, last between Saturday and Sunday, that 24-hour period when we had it open. It's still actually open right now, but during that 24-hour period, we received almost 130 intentions, which signifies for us that we can expect a modest increase in giving in 2021. So we are so grateful for the continued generosity of our community here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And uh, we're just so blessed to be uh, a community that gives so abundantly out of our abundance. And so thank you for your stewardship during this time, especially during this pandemic uncertain, unsteady time. But with that said, there is another opportunity now to give, as we normally do during the season of Advent leading up to Christmas, uh, we do our giving tree here at Holy Trinity. And so if you would like, you can donate to the HT giving tree. Uh, we are setting another goal this year, as we normally do, of receiving enough uh, donations and, and purchasing enough gift cards to be able to sponsor $225 gift cards uh, that we can then give to folks who attend the South Loop Community Table Meal on December 20th. And so if you are interested in contributing to the giving tree this year, it's all online. Usually we'd have a tree here in person where you can take a tag. Um, this year, with everything being, being virtual, you can now purchase your tags right there online. And then it'll probably be me, but somebody from Holy Trinity will be going to Target to purchase those cards on your behalf. So no need to buy physical cards this year. You can give safely online and we will make sure that those giving tree uh, gift cards get to the folks who are attendees of the South Loop Community Table on Sunday nights down at Second Presbyterian. So we are so grateful for your generosity. Um, thank you for your continued generosity as we go into Advent and approach Christmas and hope to make a lot of people's Christmases much brighter. And so thank you in advance for all of your generosity to the HD Giving Tree this year. And that, those are the announcements right now. Uh, one thing you can maybe look forward to next week is I'll be um, talking a little bit more about life together. Our process this year won't be starting until January. So um, hopefully in this next month, if you are interested in our catechumenate process, which is a, a process of just deepening in your faith, deepening in the Lutheran tradition, if that's something you'd be interested in, especially in this time, um, life together is the process for you. And, and we'd love to have you be a part of it. It's going to meet 10 times between January and uh, the end of Easter. And so uh, we will have different sessions to for the inquiring part, and then throughout Lent, we'll have a preparation period as we approach the Easter Vigil, where, we'll ha where we have an affirmation of baptism for all of those journeyers. So if you are interested in Life Together this year, um, stay tuned. There will be more details on that coming out soon, and uh, we hope you'll be a part of that this year. And that's it for our announcements. We now have uh, an amazing musical offering. Uh, it's inspired uh, by Joyce Reichardt, who um, her memorial service was back in February of 2018. And this was a recording from that memorial service that we play for you now on the third anniversary of her death.
holy God, the beginning and the ending, our hope as we wait. We praise you for joining us to your people of old. We bless you for your prophets who call us to righteousness and promise a new earth with peace for all. For the word of your covenant, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. We praise you for the coming of Jesus, our Lord, who lifts up the lowly, heals the suffering world, and proclaims your way of mercy and truth. For your word, who is Christ, we magnify you, O God. We magnify you, O God. Send your spirit on all who receive your word. Nurture our faith with your grace. Accompany us with your might and empower our zeal for your justice and joy. For your word through the church, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. I'll praise to you, holy God, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Yearning for the coming of Christ, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God direct your ways in peace, make you abound in love for another and all, and strengthen your hearts until the coming of our Lord Jesus. And may God bless you now and forever. In the name of the Holy Trinity, one God. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is coming soon. Thanks be to God. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Let us share a sign of peace. We can go into gallery view now. We can unmute. Go ahead and uh, give one another an old peace sign. God's peace, everyone.